that beat. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time to show and prove to who doubt that beat. Now everybody get tuned Tune in. in. Zoom in as we deliver the news uh -huh. in. Hot topics, top gossip, and plenty more. Mo. Get your blunts and drinks ready, cause here we go. go. That beasy, tell them what I'm talking about. No, That beasy, show them what they looking for. That, show. that beasy, show them what they wanna Let see. see. That beasy, who you think they wanna that be? That beasy. Well, hello, motherfuckers. I know, I know. This video is long overdue, but it's here now, damn it. Just make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my uploads. We're about to take a road trip to New Orleans, Louisiana, the N.O., the home of the dope, where a close-knit family of brothers had to hustle to survive. But what happens when one brother has a vision and put in motion for a legit way for the family to make it out but the other brother is too far in the streets to turn back this is the short story of kevin miller get your blunts and your drinks ready because here we go enjoy the ride kevin miller was born march the 2nd 1968 the second child to percy robert miller senior and josie may keller with four siblings his older brother Percy, known as Master P, Sister Germany, brother Corey, known as C Murder, and Vashon, known as Silk the Shocker. The Millers grew up in the B.W. Cooper Projects, known as the Calio, CP3, and the Yo in the Third Ward. They lived in a three-bedroom apartment shared with 12 of their grandparents' kids, 16 people in all. God damn. They were surrounded by poverty and violence, but stayed rich in spirit. Now, the Calliope was the most notorious project in New Orleans for drugs and murder, and also the most respected as far as street hustling and the game. The Miller boys was basketball fanatics. They played all over the city, winning tournaments. Basketball to them at that time was their way out the ghetto. Around the time their parents divorced, 12 and 11 year old Percy and Kevin jumped off the porch. He brought Kev along as his partner, someone he could trust to watch his back, his partner in crime. Now they looked up to the older OGs, the most notorious gangsters in New Orleans, such as Al Broadnax, Sam Scully, Glenn Metz, Nate Elwood, Meatball, Marlo Hemsletter, Pitch and Bob, Dip, Lil Carl, Poppin' Boo, and their cousins, Randall Watts, known as Calliope Slim, and Jimmy Keller, known as Hot Boy. Hot Boy introduced them to the game, showed them the ins and, the ins and outs of hustling. Education was still a priority to them, so they went to school, played ball, and hustled. Now, P and Kel formed a crew called the Tuesday Crew. It consisted of P, Kevin, Bruce, Burnell, Johnny, Klukey, Herb, and Chris. They were young teens hustling and had their own section in the project. This was during the crack era. The section had one way in and one way out. They were respected in the streets and known for handling business. They kept AKs and Macs, the biggest guns, dressed fly with the double stack blade medallions with their names in the middle, Kango hats, leather jackets, cutlets on Vogue's, motorbikes they were super flashy as they rode through the city master p explains this in his song called lose it and get it back kev was a gangster he was nobody to play with the ladies loved him and he loved the ladies by this time he was all the way in the streets one night while his sister was at the club a dude kept trying to talk to her but she wasn't interested but he just kept pressing her a few people ran and told Kev what was going on. He came to the club and shut it the fuck down, y'all. He had a run-in with the same dude while playing ball on the courts a few weeks later. The dude and his boys came to the court, you know, trying to press Kevin. Kev threw the ball down and approached the dude ready for whatever. When the Tuesday crew saw this, they went in their bags and ran and gave chase to the little dude and his little scary friends. He moved to Richmond, California. He had just had a son and was ready to change his life. 
His grandfather died due to medical malpractice, and P got a settlement of 10 G's. He had a vision. He was trying to go legit to come back and get his family and the guys out of that environment and to move them to Richmond. He opened his record store called No Limit Records and Tapes, and once he got settled in, he came right back for his family. But his dad and Kev stayed in New Orleans. Corey was in the army, but Kev wanted to stay back home. He begged Kev to move to Richmond with the family constantly, but Kev was too far deep in the streets. Now the Tuesday crew was built on loyalty, but of course there were the ones outside of the crew that they was cool with, which is where the beginning of Kev's life took a turn for the worse. See, when you're in the streets, getting money, super flashy, and having more than others, that breeds jealousy and envy, even from your own people. It's a shady cutthroat part of the dope game that if you're not careful, it'll cost you your life. Now it's questionable about which one of Kev's own people set him up, but they were offered a large amount of money, more than they was making hustling, to take Kevin out. Master P said that him and Kev used to sit in the projects and talk about who was going to die first. Kev always thought it would be him. The goal was to live to be 19. Because when you turned 19, you was considered an OG. September 26, 1990. Authorities found Kevin Miller's body right off the interstate I-10. They said that he had been driving two other men who were in the car. They'd gotten to some sort of argument Ultimately, he was shot several times in the back and in the head. They dumped his body on the side of the road. Like, how do you do that to him? I couldn't believe that my brother was dead. Everything stopped, man. My world was crushed. It just ripped something out of my heart, man. I drove all the way back home nonstop. That was the fastest I ever got back to New Orleans. Corey was in the Army, and he couldn't get relief to come, so he went AWOL. He left, and I don't know how he got there, but he came. When I got home, I go in the funeral. I see my brother Kevin. Like, how could I get through that? When my son got killed, that really tore us up. Me and Kevin were real tight. That was another sad day for us. Kevin had a baby on the way. His son was born after his demise, Kevin Miller Jr. He never got the chance to meet Kevin, and Kevin never got the chance to meet him. Lil Kev played basketball at Xavier University, where he graduated with bachelor's degree in science. He's married with three beautiful children of his own. Now, Lil Kev's mother passed away in September of 2019. My thoughts and prayers goes out to Lil Kev and his family. This was the short life of Kevin Miller. Now, I hope y'all enjoyed our little trip. And be on the lookout, because you never know what city and state we'll be traveling to next. Until next time, God bless. Beasy baby. He the one who dropping the paperwork. He dropping the real shit. He ain't dropping no shit made up with some lines in the middle of the paperwork with your name on top of the black shit. Like some of them bloggers out here. Wanna be bloggers. Wanna be a blogger. Shot caller. Little ass views on your fucking channel. Anno getting late tonight. Trying to drop a video with Slay tonight. I'm in the highway. The flyway. Now let me go ahead and get to the video.